today. Woo! All right, we are on. We are turned on. A little bit late today, but a uh, little technical difficulties. But um, yeah, then I will start singing to you what today's topic is. All right, today's topic is let's talk about sex, baby, during your hysterectomy and post chemotherapy and mastectomy and cancer therapy. Yep, we're talking about sex today. That's happened. It's February. It's the month of love and Mm. Valentine's and all that other stuff. All of that that jazz. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. So if you're just joining us, we actually had a huge amount of people who just started following us recently. So hello, everyone. Uh, We've got an international audience um, going on right now. I think we got covered on a few... I think Spanish um, websites. Mm-hmm. So, so, hola. Hola, ¿cómo está? Uh, yeah. Mi español está más o menos. Necesito practicar mi español, pero mi vocabulario está muy poquito. Um, all right. <laughs> I have that memorized. So, I am in Yellow McGinnis, and I this is... Nora McMahon. And we are Cancer Grads co-founders. Yes. Mm-hmm. And if, if what is... your can- first time with us. Yes. Uh, what is Cancer yeah. Grad? Uh, Cancer Grad, we are basically an online uh, support group. Uh, our mission is to uh, to um, give, give a better quality of life to cancer students and cancer grads, whether that's day-to-day quality of life or long-term quality of life. Uh, so we're trying to dive into the subjects that uh, I think Aniela and I kind of wanted to talk about that weren't being covered when yes. we were going through chemotherapy and all of that good stuff. So. And in the process, we are transforming that traditional cancer narrative from being a war and a fight to an education. So that is what we do. Um, I'm going to see if I can move your box forward. This is <laughs> hella appropriate. Super hella appropriate. This is... uh, Aniela, why don't you tell us where your, um, where your Wisdom Wednesday is? Today. Oh, today's Wisdom Wednesday. We are in my bedroom. Because um, <laughs> I feel like that was appropriate for today. So, okay. So we are in our bedroom mainly because we are, again, t- um, our topic for today is cancer stole my mojo. Mm-hmm. 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 And um, we had this, we posted it yesterday on our Instagram and we had mixed, some people were like, yes, oh my gosh, I completely stole. And other people were like, no, I'm doing pretty good. Yeah. Great. Cool. Awesome. Mm-hmm. We're not saying that you're, you know, if you had cancer, your sex drive is gone. We're not saying that at all. But in no. case it is like ours, we figured we'd talk about that. And we yeah. are coming from, just so you guys are clear, a cisgender, hetero, long-term relationship perspective. Only because that's where we're coming from. Yeah. But. Uh, yeah, if you are gay, lesbian, transgender, queer, bi, any of the above, if you are single, um, we want to address you know, we want to continue these conversations yes. um, and about those points of view. I can only speak from my point of view. Um, so that's the point of view we're going to be coming from. Um, but again, we're hoping that all of this talk will um, apply to anyone who's yeah. watching. And might spark need spark so. discussions. Spark yes. discussions. That is our thing. Because we are not experts. We are just sharing what we have learned for helping ourselves. Yep. So that is what this is. Like we do not have degrees in sex education, but if you do want to follow somebody who does, you can follow Erica Hart. She yep. is a queer black femme who had breast cancer and is incredible, has a master's in sex. So you should probably- I actually just posted a um, video that. she did with Style Like You and it's- mm-hmm. uh, And a Lore magazine. Like it's a Lore yeah. and Style Like You. So we just posted that video. Um, but you can follow her on Instagram at I heart, H-A-R-T, Erica, E-A, E-R-I-C-K-A. Um, and we have a quick shout out from Mary Leah. She is heading home from her port placement. Woo! Oh. Sending you so much love, girl! Yes. yes, and if you're following us or watching right now, write in where you call, where are you guys from? We'd love yeah. to know where this audience is being generated from as we get into these topics. So, where mm-hmm. are you from? I'm in Florida, South Florida right now. I am right outside of Philadelphia. Um, yes, where we represent. Mm. So, so, we are all over. We are all yeah. over. All right, so... Yeah. Woo! Uh, sex. <laughs> yes, let's, no pun intended. <laughs> dabbing in. Um, so, feeling like uh, cancer stole your mojo. I am 33. I was diagnosed at 31, and I was really looking forward to my dirty 30s. But 
those those have changed. And with that, we need to um, sometimes we have to look at okay, what changed about it, and where is our hesitation? And with that, it becomes is it function or emotion? Mm-hmm. What is the part that is lacking? Or it could be a mixture of both. Both can intersect. Your functioning, uh, the functions of your body is, that might have changed with either surgery or chemotherapy or radiation or any of the multitude of uh, treatments mm-hmm. for cancer um, that could intersect with the emotions, emotion and psychology. Uh, so we kind of want to dive into or at least yeah. touch base. With, yeah. Uh, I First identifying what that thing is that's kind of holding you back. Um, mm-hmm. and then die, and then we're going to dive into how to fix it, right? Like, or not even fix it, but how to, how to like find new ways. So, yes. and how we found new ways. So yeah. We don't like to complain about things that are happening without having some sort of, uh, moving forward. Solution. Resolution. All right. Yeah, so exactly. now going, if it is physical or emotional, so physical, some of the physical things that could be triggering your lack of libido, lack of wanting to have sex, all of that jazz could be physical. Um, so starting with the physical is hormonal. Hormonal. Totally. Uh, uh, but that's, I, I, mean, I had a hysterectomy. I know you did too, Aniela. Um, this means that usually the ovaries that were producing estrogen, they're not there anymore. So, um, and I'm not permitted to take estrogen. That was, um, you know, that's part of the scare of my cancer. Yeah. But I know ovarian and breast cancers are both estrogen feeding. And I have plenty of friends who, um, you know, that have made through the cancer community that have had breast cancer. And I know tamoxifen is an estrogen blocker. So, mm-hmm. And I'm on letrozole, which is for postmenopausal women who had a complete hysterectomy. So we have no hormones, some of us. And that's mm-hmm. a huge deal. Like not realizing mm-hmm. how much hormones help you want to be like, damn. Bone chicka wah wah. Now it's like wah wah. Uh, Trombone. Um, But I will say this. Uh, One of the things is, you know, not having the hormones doesn't mean that you're not going to have a a, a, a fulfilling sex life. Mm -hmm. And I always say this that um, one of the biggest sex organs for women is their brain. Um, So you need to figure out what are the things that get you motivated. Um, Get you turned on. literature or whatever it is like yeah you need to um it starts in the brain for women and if you're a man that's watching and wants to know a little more about what makes women tick it's all brains or, or, yeah it start with start with engaging us mm. get sexy with the brain with the that's, brain all right that, yeah go ahead sorry oh, and jorge is um hi cancer so i'm from venezuela yeah hey, we are venezuela. all over the world right now hey, thank awesome. you yes so awesome. Physical, so we talk about hormones, but also with hormones for women from the women's side, um, Jorge, you're from the male perspective. We'd love to hear your perspective. We only can speak from ours. Um, but damn, my vagina's dry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you know, I don't know if you know this, but um, there are some things that can help with that. Yes, and we will uh, touch on those next week. Yes, yeah, yes. but I will just quickly say that um, you should talk to your doctors, of course, before um, before navigating into any kind of uh, supplements, shall I say. Yes. Uh, but there are moisturizers and lubricants and things mm, like that. Coconut that can, oil, all yeah. kinds of stuff. But we will go into that next week. Next week we're going to be talking about vibration, lubrication, lubrication. and dilation. <laughs> Aren't you oh, all lucky? I know, I know. <laughs> Um, and let me know, um, it's saying that my connection's weak, so let me know if you guys are able to hear us still and everything's good and if things get a little wacky, let me know. Um, all right, next thing um, physically that can really cause issues um, sexually is vaginal stenosis, meaning that that thing just went shriveled, shri- shriveled up. <laughs> it's in my, everything has its sound effects. Then we also have scars, um, you know, whether it's stomach, whether it's breast, I also have lack of sensation because I had a double mastectomy. Mm-hmm. Um, Which um, reminds me, uh, there was someone in our Cancer Grad, uh, it was either our Cancer Grad Facebook page or the Cancer Grad Community Quad. And if you're not a member, please go look that up, check us out, sign up. Sign up for a um, private group. Yeah, but uh, they had a great article I wanted to touch on. It was from the New York Times, um, and it was talking about women who have had uh, mastectomies. Um, and before they had gone in for their mastectomies and consulted with their doctor, some of their doctors said that their breasts um, post-mastectomy and with reconstruction were going to feel 
like uh, like their their own breasts and um, you know prior to to surgery. And the lack of communication or the miscommunication, I should say, there was that a lot of these women understood that to to understand uh, that the doctor was saying that the sensation would feel the same for and them. the doctors were for them and the doctors were really saying that people feeling their breasts would um, that would feel the same. So a lot of women were um, kind of disappointed when they realized that the sensation was gone and it became yeah. more um, objective. So yeah. that's something that's to be aware, to be aware of. of. And Laura said that next week uh, is the week for her. So hey Laura, we are sending you some loving girl. Yeah. Some loving. Yep. Uh, yes. So yeah, so there's that if you have scars, Nora, her scars along her stomach, um, yep. and neither of us have, like, I don't have a uterus or a cervix, so there, you kind of hit a wall or do up I? in that Nerd jam. Way. Like, it's just yeah. like there's a brick wall now. Mm -hmm. So that's yeah, that's does not thing. mean that there is not uh, joy and pleasure. No, it. no, it just means that um, there can different. be, yeah, there can be painful intercourse, and I think that is, that is a thing to, um, that could be holding you back, is painful intercourse. Mm -hmm. um and then the other one is weight gain and weight loss we were saying you know and body image yep oh uh, my not, god especially if you're going through chemotherapy and i and Anil and i were talking about this earlier but i know that when i was going through chemo and i was bald and i lost my eyebrows and my eyelashes and all the things that are our society tries to tell us are the feminine things um, that are celebrated you know as as feminine when um the 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 picture i had of myself in my head was completely different than when I would pass any mirrors. And when I would pass mirrors, I would kind of, even looking in the mirror, I would be shocked. At, it's called a uh, drive-by. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you know, I would be shocked at what my appearance was and it would get me down, of course. Yeah, yeah it's hard to have mojo when you're bald sometimes. Um, so that yeah. leads us actually into the emotional part. But I still want to fit, like, one last stop on the physical side of this. And hey, hi, Roll. He's checking hi, in. Roll. He just got on. Hey, hi, he's our, he's our male buddy on this one. He's a big, huge cheerleader. And that we adore. Um, Wicked Fierce Fighters. Go follow them on Instagram. Mysterious Wicked Fighters. Yeah. Mysterious. Thank you. Mysterious <laughs> Wicked. Wicked Fierce Fighters. Make chemo Wicked brain. Fighters. Yeah. So, chemo. Brain. Mysterious. That is High Roll's organization. Is, yeah, that's High Roll's organization, in case mm -hmm. I made no sense just now. Um, but, so, if you have these physical symptoms or side effects from your cancer treatments, you definitely talk to your doctor about this. Some doctors are great with that, some aren't. We will talk more about that later on in today's talk. But you can also talk to a sex coach about this. And when you call up to try to make these appointments, ask them, do you specialize in people who have had cancer? Because that's very different than somebody who has other um, sexual dysfunctions. But I put dysfunctions in air quotes. So yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I also want to recommend yeah. that if you, ha if you are... Um, at a specific hospital, I know a lot of hospitals offer therapists um, and psychiatrists and all of this uh, through the network uh, that are cancer specific. So mm -hmm. that's a good place to start with those resources if you want to start talking to someone who might be able to unpack um, a lot of the no emotional kind of craziness that can come with a cancer diagnosis, including um, with the sex stuff. Yeah, I mean, the sex yeah. stuff is big. The sex and it um, is. very big. All right. Next, moving on to the emotional side of this. So we already talked about physical now, like all these things that physically can like lower your sex drive. But emotionally now, emotional I find to be just as big and they intersect and it overlaps and it layers. Um, so first is a like back to body image. Mm -hmm. <sighs> you know, that one, you know, and there's that self-judgment that comes with the body image of being bald. Again, for me, when I looked in the mirror when I was going through chemo and then recovery, you know, for one thing, as women... In our society, we're told that you are sexy with long hair. So you are yeah. now bald. Um, so that's crazy. And for me, I'd look in the mirror and I'd see my dead mother. Because my mom had chemo too. She looked just like that when she passed away. And so for me, that's what I would see. And so that's really hard to get, mm -hmm. as Nora puts it, a lady boner when you are... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Seeing your dead mom in a mirror. Um, <laughs> that's difficult. Your scars. Yeah. Scars can be, you know, when you're in bed really a difficult one um that um i know for me when i would look down and i see that i don't have nipples and if you don't have if you chose not to get reconstruction all of that it can trigger you like go oh i for a second forgot that i had cancer and now i remember the instant i look down and also for me not having sensation on the breast mm -hmm. when they are touched 
um, because there's this like numb sensation, it immediately triggers me to remember that I had cancer. Right. And it's just really, you know, that, that emotional side of this mm-hmm. can throw you out of the mood really quickly. Well, I also want to address that, um, you know, one of the things that are, that might be a hurdle, uh, for you, especially if you're either in chemo or post treatment, post diagnosis, um, is that I know for myself, I felt like with my body, with with having a cancer diagnosis that my body in in essence had kind of broken. And, um, I was dealing with a lot of that. And you're in, you're in crisis mode when you're, you know, you're diagnosed and you're going through treatment, you're just in survival mode. You're trying to get through chemo, which is incredibly difficult, um, or any of the treatments. Um, but then when it comes to sex drive and sex life, uh, it can be hard emotionally to kind of confront the new post-cancer you because mm-hmm. you might be afraid to, um, to think of your body as being broken in another way. <laughs> and my, my deal is this, you're not broken. You're not broken with cancer. You're not broken, you know, um, post-cancer. The way that to look at it is um, you, you have a new body. You just do. You, you do after all these treatments, um, after surgeries, you're just going to have a new body. Uh, a way to look at it is just figure out how it works now, what yeah. works for you now. And don't judge yourself um, based on who you were before cancer. Yeah. Um, you know, take the time to figure it out and communicate with your partner um, about what works for you and yeah. what doesn't work for you and kind of explore that. Yeah. And so in that, we're going to keep talking about, so uh, the emotional side of this, of that, Mm -hmm. like feeling broken, um, through your treatments and that sucks. That's like really hard to get through. Um, you know, you can also be emotionally scared of pain or discomfort, not knowing how this, like, especially if you had a gynecological cancer, Mm -hmm. how is this going to work now? Um, Mm -hmm. If as a male, you had a cancer that was testicular or prostate, how is that going to work? I mean, I imagine we have similar emotional sides of this. Like, Mm -hmm. how is this stuff going to work? So that can cause an emotion. I'm like, I don't know. Um, Also, I found it to be a bit of a Pavlov's dog thing where because of the physical side effects of dried vagina, vaginal stenosis, all that stuff that kind of came with going into surgical menopause and being on a medication that is a hormone blocker, that sex became um, physically painful. And um, we're going to discuss this next week, so definitely tune in for vibration, lubrication, and dilation to talk about how we got through that. Oh, my. Um, And um, I lost track. I'm sorry. I saw a comment. I can't do two things at once. Um, <laughs> uh, you were was talking uh, chemo brain moment right here. You were talking about um, yes. yeah, I don't painful remember. discomfort. Oh, there, there we go. go. Thank, you. Thank you. And hey, Laura, I actually talked to my husband about this and all the time, but sometimes it's hard to be intimate, especially with expanders. And thank you, Laura. Yes. Yeah, that's really yep. hard. And they're hard. It's awkward. So they're like discussing that with our spouses. But so talking about pain and discomfort. Um, so that, yeah, that Pavlov dog part of it. So mm-hmm. once you have sex like twice and it's painful, now when you go to have sex again, you're worried about it. And there's this like, you now clam up before it even starts. Mm-hmm. So for me, that was um, such a like where the physical crossed over into the emotional, where the mm-hmm. physical pain created fear and worry that next time I had sex, I was going to have physical pain again. And then made it so that I didn't really want to try to have sex because I was worried about the pain. So it's like they cross back and forth. Again, next week we'll talk about ways to really um, deal with uh, the different vaginal issues you can have from cancer. And we will go into tips on like what we found that works to get through it. Yeah. Uh, the other, um, I wanted to real quick, you know, kind of touch on what you were just talking about is, um, you know, the way we define sex, uh, or at least society often defines sex, is, uh, you know, penetration and, you know, the climax. Yeah. And that's what it is. Well, heterosex. And, that is, we, exactly. we, of well, our I mean, personal experience. Exactly. exactly. And, that's, and that tends to be, unfortunately, the mainstream. Um, but the thing is, you know, you don't have to look at it as such a linear experience. It, and if you, if you try to reframe it as, you know, or maybe you already are framing it, which is, if you are a great job, that it, it's... A way, just the myriad of ways that you can bring yourself joy or someone else joy. 
um, you know, and it doesn't have to be an end game. Uh, you know, it, uh, you can enjoy it as the journey and not as the destination is yeah. really essentially what I'm trying to say. Um, and you get to define what good sex is. That's yeah. up to you or fulfilling sex for you, because that's different for every single person. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, and in that, so that like goes into the emotional side of this, of us talking about um, if you are having emotional issues with the, you know, getting back on that horse, no pun intended, um, pun intended, <laughs> um, that you can talk to a therapist about this. Mm -hmm. Feel free to um, find it like call up your hospital and see if they have therapists that deal specifically with cancer. Also mm -hmm. talking to other students and cancer grads, like other cancer students and cancer grads, we share and knowing yep. that you're not alone in yep. your issues, Nora and I, when we, before we started cancer grad and we just were chit chatting all the time, we would talk about like, Oh my God, I feel that way too. And it made us not feel alone with our yep. sexual side effects from cancer so mm -hmm. that can be just a huge thing to know you're not alone and to share like how did you figure this out what lubricants are you using which we right. will again talk about next week well the other thing too i wanted to add to that is not even just with um fellow cancer grads and cancer students and the people who've been through it but i've uh, spoken to other women who are in menopause whether yes. they're older and they're great resources too of like resources. yeah this is how i continue a great sex life and these are the things i use or what i need to do and um, you know what, that's, I totally appreciate those conversations um, with, with other women that are older than me that mm -hmm. are still having a rocky sex life. Good for yeah. them. You know, it's, you know, uh, again, everyone deserves to have a fulfilling sex life and however they deem that. Um, yes, whatever they you deserve to have that. So by all means, take the actions and have the conversations if you, if you want better. Mm-hmm. And now, um, biggest communication is con consistent communication with your partner if you are partnered yeah. up. So, yeah. talking about, you know, I am scared to have intercourse because I'm worried about pain. And you might find from them that they're also scared that they're going to cause you pain. Mm -hmm. um, talking about, you know, I feel uncomfortable with my scar. Okay, how can we work through this? Maybe I wear a um, lingerie or maybe we do it with the lights out. I, like finding what works and it's constant communication. It changes. Yes. Um, Absolutely. And then if you are single and dealing with this, um, we'd love to hear from you. We both are partnered up. I've been with my husband since I was 15. We were mm -hmm. high school sweethearts. So I've only had sex with him. He's only had sex with me. So we might not even be doing it right. I don't know. We'll never know. We'll never know. Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. That's hilarious. <laughs> yay. But um, so, but at the same time, like that's why all of us sharing with each other really helps. So if you're a single, you know, how are you, how are you dealing with it? Um, bring that conversation over to our cancer grad community quad and we can talk about it there or even type it in the comments right now. If you're single, how are you getting through this? What are you doing? What are you finding with this? What are um, your concerns? What are your you know? concerns? Right. Yeah. yeah. Let's You're dating again. Let's share and connect. Um, and so now let's move over on to the solutions part. I have a pussy cat in bed with me right now. <laughs> this has got this has got real. Hi, kitty. <laughs> yeah, we're doing. We're, we're going there. That was not even staged, people. That was not. That was not. Not even okay. I'm, I'm a crazy cat lady. Um, hi, yeah. You want to come here? All right. Uh, so there's a tail in the middle of the screen. <laughs> ah, oh, gosh. This is why you guys tune in for, for our Facebook Live Wisdom Wednesdays. Um, this is why. All right. So solutions. Again, we're going back to our communication on this, but it's courage to talk to your doctors. I'm telling a story. Story time now. Oh, yeah. Um. My mother had ovarian cancer, so and I used to take her to most of her doctor's appointments. And I remember I was 22, so I'm like super young, and um, I bring her to her gynecological oncologist, and she turns to me, and she had just had a complete hysterectomy, stage two, stage three, sorry, stage three ovarian cancer, and she's like, honey, I am sorry, but I gotta ask this. And she also turns to her doctor, and she goes, when can I have intercourse again? And I'm like, oh, mom. Like, you know, that like, Ugh, I don't want to know. <laughs> yeah. I'm having sex, mom. Um, 
But my mom was very open with talking to her doctor about it. And so then when I had breast cancer and then had a complete hysterectomy at 32, I had my hysterectomy done. Um, no, I had my hysterectomy done at 31. 31, mm. I had my hysterectomy done. I very much did it. I became my mom. I was like, so when can I have sex again? Um, Ten years later, I became my mom. Um, <laughs> the thing was, my doctor, I, I really loved my oncologist gynecological oncologist but he was shit at this conversation because let's be honest he is trained to help get rid of my cancer but not trained to deal with sex discussions um Mm -hmm. things like that so when i asked him like do i need to be dilating i'm having painful intercourse etc etc a lot of times the doctor's like "Ah, everything's functioning the same it should be fine um and his response to me about dilation was um a penis will dilate you just fine (laughs) <laughs> that yeah you need to keep talking to the people until you really feel heard and yes. addressed um if that's the case and this doesn't mean that your doctor it's is a not, bad doctor exactly but if this is just something have, we've had we recently had a discussion with a woman who is a nurse practitioner um, named elizabeth and if elizabeth if you're watching you are awesome and hello yes and we'll um, link her website to the yes absolutely but she um we were talking about this and how this is actually it's perceived as a problem in the, in this world, because, um, you know, there are plenty of doctors again, like Angela said, that they're not trained to, um, to talk about sex and any kind of issues you might be having post-diagnosis. They're trained. Their expertise is to get rid of the cancer and, you know, for, for, to feel dismissed, um, you shouldn't feel dismissed by your doctors or feel unheard. Keep talking until keep, someone, yeah. keep that conversation. If, if they don't listen, then move on to someone else who will. Keep asking. Mm-hmm. Ask your nurse practitioners. Your yes. nurses know so much. And if you figure out something that works, share it with your doctors, share it with your nurses so that they can share it with other people because then yes. you're just spreading this forward. And that was a tip from Elizabeth. She's like, tell yeah. the nurses and doctors what you found out that works. So yes. I will admit next time, my next appointment, I'm going to go in and tell my doctor that he can dilate himself with um, mm, um, but I'm going to explain to him how that has not, was not actually helpful advice so that he in the future can learn when talking to other patients, how he can be more helpful because we are all in this to share and learn and grow. Um, mm-hmm. and as well sex coaches, sex coaches might be what you're looking for. What might be really helpful. Um, I have hired a sex coach in the past. My husband and I have utilized one, um, before I got cancer. Cause we were like, we don't know what we don't know. And we found them in GQ magazine and we're like, all right, let's try this out. And he, we would do Skype sessions and he would give us tips on things we could try and then we'd report back. And it was amazing. It really did help open things up. And there is no shame in that. Um, There's no shame in it. You don't know what you don't know. Finding new things. Yes. Yes. But next week we're getting down to the nitty gritty um, of, of, you know, lubricants, Mm -hmm. lubrication, dilation, vibration. Mm -hmm. Um, <laughs> all right. I, I'm so sorry if you are related to me and you're watching this. Oh, dear God, if you're related to us, please turn the oh, video God. off. <laughs> turn the video off. If you are watching and you know us, like, because you're family, um, next week, please do not tune in. Please do yeah, not. Please. Or if you're just a friend of my mom's and we're friends on Facebook, please shut it down. <laughs> please shut it down now. Please mm-hmm. shut this down. Dad, please don't watch this. All right. Um... <laughs> All right, so on with um, next thing is sex life, new sex life versus old sex life. Yeah, I this is my biggest thing is um, as with everything after cancer, there's the the before cancer and after cancer mm-hmm. the lives that we live, Easy. and um, it's it does you no good to sit there and dwell on your before cancer diagnosis because the only way is forward, and so. Um, don't judge yourself for either how your body functions differently or what used to work for you and doesn't work for you now um, prior to your diagnosis. Mm -hmm. Try to practice not judging yourself. Um, And again, it is hard. Easier said than done. It is easier said than done, but it, and it's, you know, you, but you do have to practice that and and it will only benefit you if you practice uh, non self judgment. Yes, it's, it's really one of the only ways you're going to be able to get through this. Um, let's be honest. 
if you, you keep holding on to, well, I want my old sex life back. You're going to be depressed. You're going to have a hard time because the, your old sex life, we have changed. We are different people. And even without cancer, you become a different person. So, you know, that's the thing. It's you have to grow into this new uh, this new you, this possible new body and um, find out what works for you now. Yes. And with that, you can that can be exciting in ways, you know, yes. that can be that can you can make that exciting. Mm-hmm. And you can be pa- like so be patient with it. But uh, so there is um, I went to a sex talk at UM. Um, which is my hospital, um, Celestial Cancer. Is University Center. of Miami. Yes, for those of yes. Mm-hmm. A comprehensive cancer center. And um, I sat in a talk with Dr. Sanjaya, and she was talking about the fact that our erogenous zones, got that right this Got time, it right, nice. Uh, our erogenous zones um, change over time. That just like our lives and our likes and dislikes change, but a lot of times the one we found when we were in high school or college, we think that's it. And that's not it. They're actually, you're, it will change. So she had this fantastic insight that she told us at this talk, and then I'm going to share it with you all. So it's um, be 15 again, or however early or old you were when you started becoming sexually active. I was around 15 with my husband, and there's that, like, that enjoyment of, like, making out and dry humping. Making out and grabbing ass. Making out and grabbing ass that is just really enjoyable because there's there's no expectation for um, penetration. And there's a freedom to that. And so starting back at that point of, you know, no expectation for penetration. And so her way or her, um, so oh, I wanted something right before that. I have notes. Um, is if you are single or partnered up, Highly suggest to masturbate first. It's really good to find out, see if it's still working for yourself without the pressure of a partner there. Um, I know that after each of the stages, whether it was my mastectomy or during chemotherapy or my hysterectomy, I would used I used an external stimulant stimulating vibrator to see if all right, can I even have an orgasm? Like, I wanted to know, can I have an orgasm at least before I brought my husband in to do this? We just lost a viewer. (laughs) Someone was like, ah, masturbation. Um, But there is this, especially for women, there's a stigma of masturbation sometimes. Um, But definitely find out, find out what's working for you first. And if you're single as well, I know you're talking from being a partnered perspective, but... You finding out what your androgynous zones are for yourself, like learning to touch. Erogenous. Oh, thank you. Erogenous. <laughs> thank you. Oh, um, so close. Erogenous zones. Yourself. The, big, the bigger thing with that, and, and you know, to, just to kind of um, uh, to touch on that is, if you don't know how your body works, how can you expect someone else to figure it out yeah. for you? Um, you, you know, that's you need to know yourself before. Um, before someone else can, you, you know, you, that's, that's a lot of pressure to leave that up to someone else yeah. to figure it out for you. So go on. Anyway, oh, Laura's like, you didn't lose your viewers. I'm back. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, and we also, we have Andrew Albright on here. We have Wendy's on here. Uh, we have some amazing, uh, lovely, awesome. amazing people who are on here watching right now. And we're just saying hello in the midst of this. All right. So Sanjaya, Dr. Sanjaya, oh, the cat's walking. You can see everything moving. Sorry. Um, Dr. Sanjaya actually gave this wonderful, like, couple-week program when you are post-cancer of ways to kind of get back into your body. Um, and I loved this. I thought this was so incredible. So it was um, week one. All right, if you're like partnered up even by yourself, like week one is exploring the other person's body without touching their genitalia. No genitalia. No um, no penetration either. So like, Does no- sound like a seventh grade help, um, like a nurse in, in, in elementary school. Genitalia. Genitalia. I like that word. I think it's hilarious. Genitalia. So, um, so there's, so you're just exploring the body and seeing what feels good. Um, not touching each other at the same time, just one at a time, touching the, your partner alone and seeing like what feels good. So you might find new and new erogenous zones. I found that the back of my neck, I really like 
to be nibbled on. And I didn't know that prior to cancer because my body changed. And I guess I'm like, ooh, I like that. Um, so that that was something that I learned. Like, ooh, I like this thing. And since I do not have my breast as an erogenous zone any longer, it is numb there, having to find other ways. So that's the, that's week one. Week two is now you are able to include the genitalia. Still no sexual penetration, all right? You're still not doing any of that jazz. But you can touch, um, and no even obligation for orgasm. Just like, oh, let me touch you here, let me touch you there. That slow, that slow kind of like high schooler, you know, thing going on. Um, like, ooh, I'm going to touch you. Let's, that's the excitement of it. Um, but still that, that holding it out. That, that waiting, that um, anticipation, how, how sexy anticipation is. Um, week um, three, now you can start touching each other at the same time. But again, no penetration. Like, you are just touching each other. Um, and like, ooh, I like both of us touching here and there. Ooh. Um, and then week four, you're getting on that penetration. Um and so it allows you that time to kind of find what's working with each other. And Hyrule's like, this is rated MA. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yep. We're going there. We're, but the thing is, that is the thing. We are going there because I feel that it's something that a lot of people have a slight embarrassment about. I grew up, my mother, okay, when I was 13, my mother, she loved being in the car ride because you couldn't escape if you were in the car. And my she was like, you need to take a mirror and explore your vagina. Oh, my mother told me that at, did I ever tell you that story? Yes. I think I might have. Yes, my mom told me that at uh, 13. And then, oh, oh, it even gets better. I think I might have been like 14. <laughs> um, and my mom, we're in the car. Again, it's always in the car. We're driving. And my mom's like, masturbation. It's a good thing. And I'm like, oh, my God, I want to get out of this car so bad. And my brother's in the back seat. He's like, I masturbate all the time. This is the most awkward family discussion in the car. I would have probably did a stuntman roll out. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. But at the same time, now I'm at this point where I go, exactly. okay, we can talk about this with You're no. You're a grown-ass woman. I'm a grown-ass <laughs> woman now, and thank you, Mom. Thank you, Mom, for making me comfortable we're talking about sex and talking about yep. our bodies. There is no shame in this. Um, we are able to re-explore re -explore our sexuality. And with that, also talking about sex, um, sex, again, is more than just two people having penetration and an mm -hmm. orgasm. Sex, um, so from my sex counselor, the sex therapist that we went to, who was amazing, and I'm not judging myself for that, all right? Um, <laughs> his point was that Sex does not need to be an appetizer and your entree and that's it, which is like maybe a smidge of foreplay and then intercourse and then we're done. But sex instead can be um, an eight course meal with, oh, hey, Alini. This is one of my husband's friends. I'm talking about the sex coach we had. <laughs> Don't tell Jordan I'm talking about this. Um, so... Eight course meal. <laughs> so eight course meal. Um, that sex can be an eight course meal. That and multiple courses might include um, penetration, uh, but they might not. They might be different touching. They might be licking. They might be. There's so much else. Alini's <laughs> like, what's up? We're talking about some crazy stuff. Um, that's what we're doing, Alini. So um, <laughs> sex can be multiple course meal. It does not have to be penetration, and we're done. It can involve so much more. And by not having um, penetration does not mean you didn't have sex. There's, there's well, also, so much. Add to, that, to add to that. Yes, and, add um, to this. Yes. Uh, sex can also, doesn't just have to be about the, the physical sensation of, you know, orgasm. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, that's great if it goes there. Cool. Um, but it also can just very much be about connecting yes. with your partner. And so like, much. that's also incredibly enjoyable as well. So uh, the pressure to do again, like I said, if it's, um, you know, to get to the destination and not to skip the journey of it. Yes. Well, and um, as Alini just said, she goes, should dab, should dab. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> 
perfect. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, like, again, the, the connection of it is... Um, so much so. Especially so as much. women. Yeah. For me, um, a lot of times I, even throughout treatment, where I wanted to have sex with my husband, not because of the fact that... I wanted sex and an orgasm, but because I really in a wanted primal to feel sense, yeah, yeah, I wanted to feel connected with him. I mm-hmm. wanted to feel that touch and that connection. Absolutely, and that was so so important. It's um, important. That is incredibly important mm-hmm. um, for, for relationships and to and, take and that, that pressure off of the orgasm. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Know? And as you had said when we were coming for the notes, Nora's big point on this was that. Um, Really, sex is an experience of joy with either your own body, so whether you are self-stimulating, or with someone else's. Mm-hmm. So it's about it's about that mutual experience of joy and yep. whatever that means to you. So especially you know, as a as an adult, a consenting adult. Yes, you know, consenting like adult. Whether it's you, does. another person, and another person, and another person, we don't judge. Whatever. Ever. That's I, your you thing. know, like that's up to you to determine what your what your sex life is fulfilling as long mm-hmm. as it's between consensual adults and and as long as it's not hurting anyone mm-hmm. uh, then yeah. like you do you and what is good for someone else uh might not be good for me so mm-hmm. again like good for you maybe not for me but uh maybe good for me maybe not yeah. for you exactly so you know you as an individual get to determine what is a fulfilling sex life and you know and that's up to you alone yeah. but I think the biggest thing is if you're experiencing these kind of either physical or emotional um, blockades to mm-hmm. a, a more fulfilling sex life that you want, or even just a sex life period, whether that's with a partner or by yourself, you deserve that. And if it's a functioning issue, talk to your doctors, talk to other survivors and, and grads and students and um, leave those discussions open because you deserve that. And if it's an emotional or psychological psychological one, uh, there's a lot of trauma that you go through uh, when you're diagnosed and go through treatment. There's tons of I'm still unpacking ba- like emotional baggage from that, but mm-hmm. the point is you can get to a more fulfilling sex life if you want to. It'll it just takes maybe it takes, a little, it takes little yeah, and that is um, patience with yourself. And as we're it. getting to the end of our talk with this, um, it's. You know, going back over, it's all about trying things over and over again. So try talking to your partner, talking to your doctors, finding a a sex therapist, whatever you need over and over again. If one doesn't work, try something else. If this thing doesn't work, try something else. I mean, I have tried different lubricants, different vibrators, different um, all kinds of I'm looking at like the Mona Lisa right now or just in discussion of doing that, like the laser treatment, all kinds. I'm, I'm like, all right, how can I find ways to make um to live out the rest of my life with enjoyment Mm -hmm. um and as lena said or try new things yeah if you're like if you never tried a vibrator before definitely get a vibrate next week we are going to i'm going to show you guys my vibrator and dilators next week (laughs) we're going in no we're not going in (laughs) that's that's that would be so weird (laughs) that was a really terrible um Yes, Alini, there is a laser treatment for vaginas. <laughs> there is a vag laser treatment. And it's like that stimulates confidence. But we'll talk about that next week. Um, so all of that stuff is next week's talk. But it is, it's all about trying new things. Um, and again, if you are, uh, if you want to talk about this more, you can do that. Um, probably the best place if you're not already a member is to go to the Cancer Grad Community Quad. We've yes. linked it through our Cancer Grad Facebook page. Yeah, you can go on um, there. You go there. You can find the link. Uh, we'll also post the link after this uh, when we post up this video um, to that. So bring discussion there if you have questions or if you know stuff that's yeah. worked great for you. By it's all a, means, and it's a private group, so mm-hmm. there's no judgment. There's mm-hmm. no a, outside people, yes. employers looking in on you mm-hmm. know what. And you're talking what, about. what we say in there is private, guys. Yep. So, mm-hmm. um, and if anybody does get out of hand, is in like, you know, don't yuck someone else's yum. Um, mm-hmm. We will we will kick you out. Like, yep. I have no problem with that. So mm-hmm. you got to be nice about it. You got to be, be right. you got to be kind. Um, and. So yeah, so that's that's kind of where we're going. All right, I think. Oh, uh, so yeah, talking about uh, signing up for. Also, if you want to sign up for our newsletter, you can go to cancergrad.org. 
We got uh, mm-hmm. our monthly newsletter. Um, sign up for our email list. We got the community choir you just mentioned. If you want our t-shirts and our mugs. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's all through our school store. Yes. Captain, yes. Org. Definitely. Oh, if you also, if you, um, if you want to be part of our yearbook, if you want to be profiled on our yearbook, we have quite a few people, but um, hit us up. Info yeah. at cancergrad.org. Uh, we'll be happy to share your story and your tips and tricks and profile you. Um, yes. it's, the, it's important for other people to see their stories in your own and mm-hmm. it's important for you to tell your story. So hit us up if you'd like to do that. Yeah. Let us know. Um, we've got about a month's worth of people already in the queue. So sub- the sooner you submit, the sooner you come up, but we've got a, we've got a, some great profiles coming up, which is exciting. We and I'm we're excited. in the process of making new t-shirt designs, some for mm-hmm. cancer, cheer, like cancer grad cheerleaders, some for students, mm-hmm. so we're, some for like the family members. So we're making all that jazz. Um, also, again, if you really like, if you want more information just on sex education, follow Erica Hart, um, the incredible breast cancer grad. We featured her on our yearbook, um, and she is so cool. She is a black, queer, femme. Um, that's what how she refers to herself, and has a master's in sex education. It is so mm-hmm. cool. Also, today is February 1st. Which is feel it on the first for Nolly. On the first, so mm-hmm. we're giving that shout out to feel it on the first with Nolly. She is right now um, just started treatment again. She um, ended up um, getting a reoccurrence, and so we are sending her tons of love. Yes. So Nolly N A L I E dot C A. If you want to follow her journey, and she um, has a great YouTube channel as well. It, so yeah, follow all of that stuff. I think we are done next we're week. Done. Vibration, lubrication, dialation. Oh my. my. <laughs> I know. 3.30. 3.30 next week. Yes. So take care, everyone. We'll see you next week, or we'll see you in the comments. Yeah, or we'll see you in the comments. We'll, we'll follow up on comments. Pop out. See y'all later. Bye. Bye. Try to finish. <laughs>